Okay, we know f of t has some derivative little f of t. All right, and that's given by this graph down below here. And the other thing we know is f of 0, big F of 0 equals 5. So our goal is to find big F of 1, 2, 3, and 4. So to do this, what I'm going to do is write it out as the fundamental of theorem um, revised and rearranged. All right, so what we can do to find f of 1 would be, that's going to be whatever f of 0 is, plus the amount of change going between 0 and 1 of f of t dt. So I can write that out with an integral, first of all. Next, I know f of 0 is given to us to be 5. And this amount of change can be based on that derivatives graph. It can be represented as the area in between 0 and 1 between the graph and the x-axis. So in our case, we care about between 0 and 1, basically this triangle going on to the left-hand side. Now that triangle, we can calculate the area pretty easily, right? It's 1 on the uh, bottom, 1 on the height. So that's 1 half base time site. It's going to have 1 half as its area. So we can say 0.5 or 1 half, 5 plus 0.5 is 5.5. And that's going to be the final position for big F of 1. All right, next, let's go on to F of 2. So F of 2, that's going whatever your starting place is, F of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 2 of F of t dt. So in this case, that is all the areas between 0 and 2, both those triangles basically. And I would split it into two separate triangles. Now that next triangle is going to have a base of 1 and a height of 1. So again, 1 half base times height makes another 1 half. So our starting position goes as 5 plus in total, well we could say 1 half plus 1 half if we wanted to. Those are both positive because those areas are above the x-axis, but 5 plus 1 is 6. All right, f of 3, f of 0, plus the antiderivative between 0 and 3, f of t dt. f of 5 again, f of 0 is 5, but then what about this uh, amount of change, that integral from 0 to 3? Well, we've already calculated between 0 and 2 totaled up to 1, but all the way to 3 is going to include this other triangle down here. All right, this time base is 1, height is 1, so its area is going to be 1 half, but as we calculate this up, let's be careful. It was 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 half, and we have to make that one negative because the area was below the x-axis. All right, so 5 plus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 half is 5.5, or 5 and 1 half. One more, all the way to 4. So f of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 4 of f of t dt. I know when we do four of these in a row, it feels a little bit repetitive, but that's not a bad thing. Okay, so we know that's 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 half. And then we're going to subtract off this last area. It looks to me like we have a nice square going between 3 and 4 and down to negative 1 here. So length times width or base times height, the area there is going to be 1 that's going to be subtracted off. So let's think about this. We have 5 plus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 half minus 1. I believe works out to be 4.5. All right, so remember if the areas of the derivative between the derivative and the x-axis are above the x-axis, those areas are going to be added. And if the areas of those shapes are below the x-axis, they get subtracted away. So I hope this helps out as you're working on setting them up and solving them down.